It's one of the biggest mindset shifts I see amongst the CEOs that I work with is this idea of letting go of being right. So what do I mean by that? Being right is quite a luscious and very human, often quite masculine way of being. So what does that mean? That means in any given situation, you are the smartest person in a room. As a CEO, you come in and you give your answer and people do what you say and your answer is the best one. And often you probably found throughout your career that you are fighting for that answer, that your energy is driving forward people to believe in you and believe in that answer that you've got. No matter if you're right, maybe that matters or it doesn't matter. But the question is, is you fight for the answer and fight for what your point of view to be the correct one. Now, don't get me wrong, that can be a tactic that can lead to success. But it's a strategic weakness in you because ultimately you're limiting yourself and you're limiting the business. And also you're setting yourself up for a fail and for an exhausting life. So let's break it down. What's bad about being right all the time? Number one, it can be a battle for you, right? You're used to coming into a combative situation. You are in a room, your meetings are quite intense. Everybody's got their point of view and there's a winner and there's often a loser. It ends up being and feeling like that. And that's exhausting for you, but it's also exhausting for others. Equally, that means it doesn't leave room for other ideas that may be as good, if not better than the ones that you've got. I mean, how are you to absolutely know that? It's very limiting to believe that you've got all of the correct answers or you know the best thing to do. Now, don't get me wrong, that's different from instinct. Instinct might tell you what's good and what's not good to do, but that's different from being right and from being the smartest person in the room. Often it means as well, nothing can happen without you, right? Your C-suite team don't make choices and decisions. The business doesn't move forward without you driving it forward all the time, which means you can't take time away, which means you can't spend time on perhaps some of the more strategic elements of the business because you are bogged down in dealing with the operational day-to-day -day because, again, you need to be right in these situations. So it serves you being right. And don't get me wrong, it's great for the ego to be right all the time. And it may have got you to where you are, but it's not going to guarantee future success for you. So it serves you, but it may not be serving the business. So what's the alternative? So as a leader, as a CEO, you have a great opportunity there, right? You have a spotlight. You're spotlighting rather than the ideas of yourself. You're spotlighting the ideas, the strategies, the approaches that are there, not you. It's less about you. It's more about the ideas and the strategies. They may be yours. They probably won't be yours in the future, but it's about putting that spotlight onto the ideas and the strategies of that business. That's the power that you bring. Equally, that spotlight can also be put onto individuals, individuals who have differing point of views to you, perhaps, or equally bring something that you don't. You can't be expected to know everything all of the time. Again, that's a limiting belief. It might have got you to where you are, but it's not going to get you somewhere in the future, get you to a different, more exciting or vibrant place. It simply won't do that. So you are, the power you bring is a spotlight onto ideas, onto strategies, and onto individuals, not onto yourself. You're swapping answers for questions. Again, you don't have to have all of the answers. I have a video on that, which is linked here. It's more freeing to be asking the right sorts of questions and looking at curio following curiosity than it is to have all of the answers right there and then. Less pressure on you, it's less exhausting for you, and it leads to a broader discussion. So ultimately, what you're doing is leading with curiosity, right? You're very curious about other people's points of view and what they have. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean you can't be right. It doesn't mean you're always right. And you're letting go of that ability or that feeling that you have to be right in all situations. That's simply what you're letting go of here. At the end of this, then, you can be a much, much happier person. Because again, all that energy that you're pushing into those battles, those competitive situations, all that energy is dissipated into other things. You're leading with curiosity. So actually you gain a lot more energy. You gain a lot more clarity from not having to simply win. So the first shift you need to make then is understanding that you need to let go of being right. Right? That's the biggest shift you need to make is letting go with this idea. Well, maybe if I'm not right, what will happen? What will change? And as I explained in terms of the alternatives there, you can lead with, lead with curiosity. You lead with exploring other people's ideas. Play with this idea, see how it goes. Go into a meeting, don't give an opinion, don't give a thought, don't feel like you have to have the answer in that situation. See how the conversation unfolds. Maybe you feel like you need to give an answer, maybe you don't, but experiment with not being right. That's the place to start. It's just trying it, leading with questions, not leading with answers, not being 
attached to the outcome being the outcome that you want it or need it to be. Letting go of that, going in with an open mind about what the answer might be to the situation. Now, don't get me wrong, your instinct might be telling you that this is a mistake. Again, I've got stuff and support on that. Look at this video I've got about buses and umbrellas to help you with that. The instinct's there for you to do that, but that instinct can also lead you to curiosity. How about if that instinct's telling you this is a bad idea, going in with, no, I think that's a bad idea, leading with curiosity. Okay, I'm curious about this idea. Your instinct can lead you to ask the right questions to figure out if it is a good or it isn't a good idea, rather than your instinct telling you immediately to stop. So use that instinct that often guides you into being right all the time to follow your curiosity to find an answer. Ask questions, lead with curiosity, trust your instinct, but that trusting of your instinct doesn't mean you have to go in and be right. It can be extremely liberating for you and the team. You can actually come up with something that was far better than the answer you would have given in the first place. But it takes time and a bit of faith in terms of trying something new. So try it, let go of it. Try a few meetings to see how it turns out. Feel your energy afterwards. Are you as exhausted as you would have been before? See how the energy in the room changes. Take a step back and just see how it feels to try something new. You can't suddenly do this overnight. Thank you very much for your time. I would love to hear your experiences of how this has gone for you. And if you want to talk more about it, drop me a line. My email and um, details of DMs are down there. I would love to hear your experiences of this. Thanks again for your time. Bye-bye.